So anyway, thank you all for being here. And thank you so much, Anita, for being here as well. Anita Mornall is a member of the Crow Nation. Uh, she lives in Bozeman, but as I understand it, you're up in Anchorage right now um, doing some postdoctorate work. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. And so she's really graciously agreed to host this workshop with us as part of our One Book, One Bozeman series here at the library. And she's going to discuss and demonstrate some beading techniques for us tonight. So. Without further ado, I will pass that over to her. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, and yeah, if you have your craft kit, feel free to join us along at home. And if you don't have a craft kit, but you've got the same supplies, once again, feel free to join along. So thank you so much, so much Anita, for being here tonight. All right. So um, let's see, let's go for the screen sharing. Okay, is it okay for me to share my screen now or? Yep. Yep. Okay, so. Um, can you guys see the PowerPoint on there? Or this? Yep, oh, I, I see started. it. Oh, okay. All right, and so. Oh. Oh dear. Hmm. I'm just trying to get my thing all set up here. I thought I could see something else over here. Um, All right, so um, oops. So it looks good for my end once you hit present. I don't see anything else from your screen. Okay. All right, well, um, I just, uh, hello, and thank you to the public, Bozeman Public Library for hosting this workshop and programs um, for, and for inviting me to come and share some of my being with you, everyone here tonight. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and then I'll describe what I'm going to share with you today. Um, first, I would like to do a land acknowledgement for all of those of you us in attendance. Um, it'll be a land acknowledgement for, for down there because I'm up here in Anchorage. So I might have a few um, friends that might be chiming in from up here. Um, after that, um, I'll let's get started with the show, uh, rest of the talk. So as the land acknowledgement, uh, we live, work, and play here on a portion of the unceded territories of the indigenous peoples of Montana. This beautiful valley, the Valley of the Flowers, or the Gallatin Valley that many of us call home, is located on the traditional territories of the several indigenous peoples. One of them is my tribe, the Etsaka or the Crow Nation. We honor and acknowledge the honor and ancestral and present land stewardship and place-based knowledge of those peoples and of these territories. Thank you. So with this first slide, I want to show you just a few things on here that um, last Thursday, some of you uh, listened to Stella's talk. This is a picture of Stella and, and Tom. These are my two kids and this was probably Stella's probably about two years old and Tom was about six. And this is down in the Crow Fair and she is wearing an elk tooth, elk tooth dress. And bead work traditionally, before all the beads and stuff came to the United States or so North America, um, most tribes had other forms of adorn adornment and beads were actually a trade item that were brought to North America um, to to trade with different tribes. Uh, the crows used elk teeth traditionally to um, decorate a lot of their 
um, clothing and also porcupine quills and, and painting things as well. So during this um, workshop, I'll discuss a little bit about the peyote stitch and the applique or two needle flat stitch and this uh, picture with my mucklets, which was on the flyer and everything uses uh, an applique or a two needle flat stitch. So in that, I mean that you use one stitch to uh, one needle with the beads on it and the other one to tack everything down. And to make a pair of moccasins or mucklets, you would put the beadwork generally on before you sewed it together. So Shotache, how are you? Um, last night, some of you may have watched or listened to um, Franco Little Light, and he was talking, he mentioned the uh, medicine well, and I thought, well, I have a picture of that, and so I would put that in, in my presentation as well. And so this is the uh, medicine well, and it's actually um, in Wyoming, but it's very close to the Montana border. And it's up in the Bighorn Mountains. And so the Bighorn Mountains are a range that um, extends from uh, south central Montana down through Wyoming. And one part of them, you have the medicine well. And so this is a sacred place that you know, indigenous people have used for probably 7,000 years. And um, people still come up and it's, um, it's a very special place and you can see all the different um, pieces that people have hung up and, and put with their prayers and have a ceremony there. Um, so I am an enrolled member because um, Brianna and Carmen had said of the Episolica or the Crow tribe in Montana. Um, I actually grew up on three American Indian reservations. I was born on the Brighton Reservation, or the, it's a, the reservation for the Seminole tribe, um, the Seminoles in Florida, as there are other Seminoles, some in Oklahoma and, um, and another, I think another tribe in, in Florida too. And I was only there for a couple of years and this picture over here is my mom and my dad and my sister, my little sister and myself. And my mother was wearing a, a traditional uh, seminal dress, a uh, skirt. And she had a top that went with it too. Um, that was Paul and Rosa Dillon Moore and my sister, Jean and I. Um, then I spent on my younger ages, when I was about that size, on the Salish Kootenai um, or the Flathead Reservation in Montana. Um, we went to these different reservations because my father worked for the BIA and um, he was an engineer. And so after the Flathead Reservation, we moved up to the Blackfeet Reservation in Browning. Um, and that's the home for the Kamskabi or the Kani tribe which is um, the, um, they have a, a sister tribe right across the uh, Canadian border, basically the blood, um, blood tribe and our, and Pagan tribe is up there too. And so there, there are three affiliated tribes of the, um, the Kanis. And this is where I learned how to be initially um, while I was growing up in Browning. I was probably about 12 years old and we had um, beading circles, much like uh, book groups or something like that. And women would get together and um, they'd order big um, orders of beads and, and distribute them, split them up and give them to everybody and um, work on different projects. People would be sometimes doing the same things and. Uh, for the younger ones of us, we learned first how to do some simple things like necklaces and maybe some earrings, and then we learned how to do medallions and learned later how to make more complicated um, beadwork. So this bead workshop, I'm going to try to show you the uh, two needle flat stitch technique, as it's called, which is a basic technique that's used for many projects. Um, also 
just mentioned or go over what the lazy stitches. Um, it's also a basic te technique that is used for many projects. Um, and then finishing or edging um, techniques, because so, often you might have something like these uh, hair ties. Once you bead the, what you're doing, it'll have a lot of thread on the back of it. So you'll want to put some backing on it. And a lot of times you'll sandwich that together with something and you'll finish the edges. Um, and so I'm, I'll show you the basic way how to do that. And these are some of the beads that we have in your packet. So you have um, five different colors. Um, and so you don't have to use all of them. Um, you can decide what you want to do. Um, I'll probably start with something that's um, on another little beading packet um, on a leather pouch and see how that works, show you how to do that. Um, here. These are hanks, which is how um, a lot of times people do buy beads this way rather than loose. Um, and it's, they all end up being loose anyway, but it's, sometimes it's easier to work right from the hanks. Um, and this is a little inset picture here of the peyote stitch, which I won't really show you how to do that tonight, but in the links for the flyer that I provided, um, there are some good demonstrations there. Um, this is a close up of this little um, cheese cutter that I, I did design, made this design on this handle. And um, you can see that there's a leather wrapped around it. And it's basically a weaving stitch where you're putting one bead on at a time and you just go round and round and round. And um, the designs go diagonally. And so there is actually graph paper that you can buy that's been designed for figuring out these designs. But once you've done it for a while, you can kind of figure it out in your head. Um, or you can just play with it and learn how to do it. Um, but as I said, there, there are some links for that in the um, flyer that I sent. And so that's all for the PowerPoint. And I have my email down here in case anybody really needs to maybe ask come some questions later that um, we can't get to during the workshop. You can feel free to um, email me and I can answer you the best I can. And otherwise, um, I guess we should probably get started um, with the beating. And so I will stop sharing this and um, I will actually change my camera to my other camera. That works. So let's see. Can you guys see yeah, me? Perfect. Or you can see that well. Um, yeah, we can see your hands and um, a leather little area. Okay, yeah, perfect. That's so, awesome. Thank you. All right. So um, this little leather piece right here is just a little pouch that I had made a while ago. And it's just a simple leather pouch. And I sewed it together with some, some of the nylon thread. And um, I thought I might be able to start a little design on here. A lot of times if you are working with some fabric that is kind of loose, um, if you're doing the uh, felt piece that you have, or if you're using actual leather, um, you'll want to put some paper backing on it. And a lot of times what I use is just the uh, paper, like the paper bags from the grocery store. And so just take a bag and you stick it on the back and just use some big stitches. I don't know if you can see here, but I did put just some big stitches on. And at, when after you're all done with your um, beading on here, you can cut those uh, stitches off and trim the paper off, but this will make your um, surface a little bit stiffer and easier to work with. 
I'm just going to check on the right one here. So, um, if you have your packets with your bobbins of thread, you want to, um, well, I'm actually going to take it off this big one. I'll show you what these look like. I have a sock that covers this up, but if you get really into the beading and want to do a lot of it, you can actually order these bigger spools of thread. And um, so you want to pull off maybe, I don't know, a yard of it or so. You may have been ahead of me, you might have already got your thread and needles and everything ready. But you'll take your beading needle or your sharps, and those are, they might be a little bit tricky to um, try to thread. And a beading needle, one of the differences for a beading needle is that the eye of the needle is just as thick as the rest of the needle. And most regular sewing needles are, um, the eye of the needle is a little bit thicker. So like these are regular sewing needles. And with a bigger eye, it's a little bit easier to thread. But these don't go through your beads very well if you have little beads. And so I need to thread this. And it might be hard for me too because my eyes are not working as well as they used to. Right on here. Well, it's pretty bad if the instructor can't even thread their needle, but I'll get it here. So You'll also need a lighter, like um, you, if you don't have a lighter, you can probably just tie a knot on the end. Um, I like to use double thread for um, the beading, the top needle. So you pull all your thread through and and I use a lighter to actually burn the ends of the thread and it makes a knot this way, but it's nylon. Because if you just tie a knot, often the thread might just pull through and um, because the nylon is so slippery, but if you use a, a lighter, it can actually just makes a couple little knots, hard little things and so. That part will go like that. And then, so this one will be for the beads. And then I will take just a regular needle for tacking it down. Actually, I should probably use it. Um, for, uh, I'm doing mine on leather, so I actually need a sharp needle, um, a Glover needle. And the Glover needle has um, some three prongs on it so that it um, can pierce the leather. So the second needle that you get, um, if you're 
just doing like on a piece of felt or on a piece of fabric, you can just use a regular sewing needle and because it'll be easy to go through. And but if you're using leather, um, a glover needle is preferred, just kind of saves your fingers and um, the actually pierces and cuts the thread. I mean the leather. So I would take about that much thread again. And I usually double this thread as well. Um, some people like to have it um, just use a single thread for the tacking so that you don't see the thread, but I never really had a problem with that. So I usually use a double thread. Again, I'm going to burn the end. So I usually hold it between my fingers and have maybe half an inch of uh, the two ends sticking out. And then just burn it, blow it out. So now I'm ready to start. And my design, um, I, guess, I guess I can show you something. This is um, on a piece of a little bit heavier um, felt type material that um, I think it's called Pelton that people use. Sometimes it's kind of for interface for collars and things like that. Um, but it makes this a pretty good beading surface. And so you can see that you can make, um, this has, is like a floral design. And um, so you would outline with one, one color first, you do the outlines and then you fill it in. So I might try something. Um, I'll show you a, a geometric design, which um, would be pretty easy to do on mine without having to really draw it out. But if you were going to do something like this, you would draw your design on top of your, whatever you're gonna beat it on, and then use those lines, the outside ones to, um, start your design. So I need to poke. Come through the bottom of its paper and leather. Sometimes it'll, both threads won't all come all at the same time. So you have to, uh, pull the thread through until you have both of them on there. Now you're ready to um, put some beads on your thread. And you guys, your beads are all mixed up. So I would spread them out onto, if you have, you could use a lid, a plastic lid or something, or I use a piece of leather often. And you can put your beads on here, or you can have these are some electric tape boxes. You might find some other little thing, and it's, it's nice to reuse, reuse stuff like this rather than throw it away. Um, and these make good little bead containers. But um, you can take some of your beads and um, spread them, either spread them out on the surface in front of you, or else put. Um, have them on in a container that you can work with your beads and do that. Take three beads. I can show you both techniques that if you had we're working from a uh, hank, you would have the beads already on a string like this. And this way it's, it's a pretty easy to get your beads off. Okay. 
So the design I think I will put on here. I'll just be um, a simple geometric design. I'll use probably four colors and I'm gonna start in the middle here and, and I'll progress to one side and then come back and, and do the other side. And I'm not gonna draw this on mine, but um, a geometric pattern, sometimes you don't have to draw it right on your, your piece if you can figure it out somewhere else. And um, if you're doing a flower or some other type of design, you might want to draw that out on your, um, on your material. But if you're using a hank, you can um, take your beading needle and uh, just um, actually slide your needle right onto the hank onto those beads. And so I'm gonna put like four beads on and then just pull it off. And that's, and I have those four beads. So that's one color. This is another Hank. I'll probably use some of this color. So if you have a hank, you can kind of pull on the end of one and you'll um, still leave it attached from one end. And you can slide some of those beads off onto another little pile. So I put four beads on. I'm going to use four beads of each of these colors. So this is my second color. I'll put four beads on here. And if you have to pick out your colors, if you're going to do the same thing, then you can pick out right from a, your surface that you're working on. I'll use some of this white color to make another little pile. Actually, I'll just keep those on pink. Um, I think I'll put um, for my middle beads. I use some of these gold beads. So that's my middle, so I'll go back and now I need to put four more of the white ones on. And then this darker color, and I'll do like you guys. Um, Sometimes it helps to sort of just uh, look like you're going to stab your bead and then slide it onto your um, needle with your finger. That's four, and now I'll do four of these.
So now I have all of the first row, which is actually going to be the middle of this design on my thread here. And I'm going to take my other, um, well, actually I could draw a little line on here to make it a little bit straight so that I have, make sure we lined up here. Just eyeball that in and, and put that in there. So you're going to have to hold that top row while you take your other needle and thread. And start. I usually hold like my finger on the underneath and then my thumb on the top and then take your other thread with the uh i have my sharp glover needle and then poke hold either on and then your underneath i try to come from the same side of the row of the beads all the time so that it's consistent and even so again, you gotta make sure that you get the whole piece in there. And then that then sometimes you have to kind of pull it back out. Make sure it's been on there. Extra thread. Okay. So my beads are pretty small. These are actually size 13s. So I'm going to go between like every four beads. Um, you're using size 11. So you could do either threes or between three or four beads if you're doing the same thing. And you go through the top, just directly across from where you had come up, but on the other side of the row. And you just Carefully pull the beads, the thread through there. Then you have to come up underneath again. And this you kind of get it, start getting a feel for it, I guess. Um, it's, you be careful not to stab yourself when you're pushing the pack down. Some people use actually um, a leather thimble, but it's more for pushing if you're doing a lot of beads on something that's kind of stiff and hard. So You get the idea of how this works. It's basically you're just um, sewing this strand of beads onto your whatever you're sewing it on with your other thread. And you can see that you can use your thumb to, um, to push your beads back up. You want them to stay snug and, and tight. So as you're tacking them down, you won't won't see the threads or anything if you keep keep the thread tight and 
I probably can see I have actually have the thread wrapped around my fingers back here so that got the top thread so that I can have control of that. It just takes a little practice. The more that you do it, um, you'll get better at it. And Anita, I have a question. So when you um, you made that first line of beads on the thread, and now you're sewing it on, yeah. so is there a thread twice through each hole in the beads or no? No. No. So, no, this one just is the one that the beads are on. Yeah. It's the one with your skinny bead needle. Yep. So for this technique, no, it's just the other needle and thread is going over the top and it's tacking it down. So as you, oh. can, you can see in the back, we have a line of thread that is in from, from this other one that's tacking it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. And yeah. if anybody else has any questions, please either raise your hand or type it in the um, Q and A. We can unmute you if you'd rather talk. That might be easier. Um, but I just wanted to let you know. Thanks. Well, so I see I have a mistake myself, and um, when since I can just slide these off, I have actually put five beads on instead of four for my this last dark color. So that's fine. Um, I can just hold on to the beads and slide them off. I mean, there'll be a lot of times you might have to take some of your beads back off. So you can just hold on to them and then just slide your needle with your thread right back off. And so do that. And, and I just need to pick up four more of these beads here. And I'll just pick them up like that. Since you guys all have to pick your beads up this way, I probably should too. We do have a question for you, Anita, from from the Q&A. We have Marcy asking, she's playing catch up and she's wondering, did the bead thread have a knot in it? Holding the yes, beads on? The bead thread has a knot and um, I actually put the knot in, I made the knot with, by burning the knot in there and by burning the ends to make the knot and um, yeah, so the first strand has to get um, come up from the bottom to start with your beading needle and the, the knots on the other side. So it's not just dangling. It's, you're not just, it's not like a piece of embroidery thread at the end. Um, if that helps. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now I, I have my beads back on here. I'm almost done with the first row here. Okay, so now I just have my end of my uh, beading, the bead thread. So I need to go back through the leather um, to complete this row. And so I will turn my piece around the other way so that I can see where that goes. Oops, looks like I went through one of my 
Granges there. Get my tack and thread out of the way. And then I have my other my top thread here. And then I did just loosen my tack thread when I do that, but you can tack it back, push it, pull it back down. So I need to push that last row up to the end there and then hold it with your finger again. And uh, just go back through the leather to be careful. Oops, punching this back down with these thin little needles. Sometimes they can break, but um, Another thing you can do, which maybe I'll do that now because this doesn't want to go through there, is to poke a hole in there with your leather needle if you're actually using leather. And if I was using um, what you call brain tan leather, it would be a lot softer. This is actually a commercial tan leather. And um, brain tan leather is uh, leather that's been prepared um, tra traditionally through. Um, rather than using uh, chemicals on it. And the leather is a lot softer and easier to work with. So it, it will actually be easier to pierce with your beading needle. So here I'm gonna poke it through with my other needle. Well, I can find the hole. Okay. okay, so that's the first row. And I'm going to have um, two rows or three rows just like this. So I'll come up just next to it, you have to kind of eyeball it. Um, what would be a bead length, bead width from that other one to start my next row? Um, my beading needle. Okay, so now the beading needle is with the thread is on the top, and my other um, tacking needle is on the bottom. Sometimes you guys just got to make sure that you don't get all tangled up. But um, I'm ready to put my next row of beads on. So since this is I'm doing a geometric pattern here, um, I'll do I'll just do like two rows of each. So uh, another row, or I'll do three rows so that this will be halfway through, I guess. Yeah, yeah I'll just do two. So I'm going to do the exact same combination that I did for the first row. So I need four beads of each color. It's nice to work from the hanks, but obviously once you get your project going, a lot of times you'll end up with a whole bunch of beads, just like you guys have on this. And when I'm traveling, I a lot of times will have just a container full of assorted different colors beads, and um, it's an easy way to bring it with you. You can't bring all the hanks with you. And um, so a lot of times when I do bead projects, it might be if I'm 
on a trip or something, or um, doing something like that. Uh, for like a geometric pattern after you have your first row down and you have your second row ready to go. A lot of times you can um, go all the way to the end and take your uh, top thread needle and actually go through that first where it's gonna end. You're still going to want to hold your beads tight and so fringe out of the way. You got to be careful not to tack this down with the other thread. So here's the second row and it's just loose. And so now I'm just going to go back and I can use the other row to line up my beads that I need to be lined up. You just repeat the process and um, start down here on the end where we just finished. Come up from the bottom and I go from the outside towards, towards the row of beads that's already on there now. A lot of times that first row is the hardest one to get on. You want to get it on straight and um, on whatever your pattern is. And after that, you want your beads to be snug against that row. So you have to uh, come from the outside towards the inside. And you can see I'm still holding this thread with my other fingers underneath there and, and pulling it and using my thumb and finger to make sure these beads lay flat and are next to the other beads. It would have been easier to put this on before putting the fringe on, but um, it's okay.
And it's kind of a slow process, um, but. Hey, would you mind holding up the piece so far next to the, the pattern you're working off of so we can kind of see what they look like next to each other? I'm sure. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So this lighter color would be these outsides here. And then I'll put that same color down to the next row, which you'll see in just a second here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You see, I got a little leaf right here. So I think I just, sometimes your thread will try to make a little knot in itself. It's another thing I didn't um, do, which you can do, and it's, it's good to do a lot of times, is to condition your uh, thread if you have any beeswax. Um, it sometimes kind of helps it from getting all frayed. I can do this now. And I didn't really put that on the list, but um, you can just rub your thread through that like that, and that'll help you know, keep it from getting all frayed and stuck together. Okay, so. Now I'll start the third row, which I'm going to come just between these two colors. And I'm going to put on this outside color and work in. So it'll be a shorter row. It's just going to be about that length. And it'll be, um, I won't have that middle color anymore. Okay, so I'm put okay, so I'm just using four beads for each one, so four color, dark ones again. Danita, we've got another question in the Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. Just wondering, um, if you're tacking it down between each bead, or is there an interval of beads that you're tacking well, it down between? Yeah, I'm not doing each bead. You don't have to do each bead. Um, I'm actually doing about every four beads because um, these are pretty small beads. Um, they're size 13. Um, but you know, you could probably do like either three or four beads. And depending on your design, like if you weren't doing, um, you know, a lot of times will want to have a uh, tack right where, if you're doing a geometric design, right where the um, change in the colors are. But um, it's, I'm not, you don't have to tack every single one down. I'm just doing every few, about every three or or for every four beads is what I'm actually doing. So. And um, if I have time here, I can show the lazy stitch, which you do not 
tack them down at all, and that's why it's called the lazy stitch. Um, and it's used for different parts of a, a beading project. Um, actually, well, this hair piece here, um, all of this part was done first with a um, applique or two needles stitch here. And then um, this outside edge right here is actually a lazy stitch. So these are not, with a lazy stitch, you don't actually stitch, tap them down. And so you, you just um, can do it with like, here is about six beads, I think. And you just come up and down and just keep going back and forth, but they're not tacked on in between. And that's why it's called the lazy stitch. Then you have to do the backing on that. So this next row will make your design sort of pop out again. Um, and come from the outside of the row, just tap it down. And you want to have it be snug up against that next row. So I'm going to go in, you can see right in between those two rows. So uh, this is a little thing you might encounter. This thread wanted to go on the other side there. So I can just kind of pull it back up or use this little row and pull it up so that it can get lined up good. You might put your thumb right where you want that to come through and then just pull it back down. So this will be the end of this row. Get it all tacked 
slides going down. So that's how it's starting to look. See, it's a little bit after eight o'clock now. Um, I'm wondering if I should show um, the edging stitch. Um, so you can see here, continue with this. Um, I did have. Um, a barrette that I had started that I could show a little bit of how to do this, um, which is just uh, actually it's kind of like a, I guess it would be like the single stitch um, applique stitch, which I am doing right onto a barrette, and I can maybe show a little bit of that. Just kind of a tangled mess, um, but what I'll do is I'll show you how to. If you needed to make add more thread and needles or more thread to your project when you got done, you would um, again do a knot. So the back of your stuff is going to look like this if you have the paper backing on here. Uh, otherwise, you'll just have the thread showing, but you'll have thread showing here. So that's the, um, you can see where I tacked everything down. And I would actually um, cut both of these scissors. I usually you'll run out of your tacking thread before your other one. Um, but if you need to put some new tacking thread on, you would uh, trim, leave a little, about a quarter or up an inch or maybe a little bit longer thread on here and then you'll burn these with your lighter sometimes i smash them down with my finger a little bit and so that'll keep the thread from um pulling out and if you just tie a knot that's not going to be very secure because this nylon thread um, can come untied um, some people will actually um, double tie a knot here, um, but I think that just burning it is, is strong enough. So I can stop here with that part, but you can get the idea of how that will go. It will be, have this design that will be similar to, um, getting it in here, have another barrette um, hair piece that has that type design on it. Um, I'll just get these other pieces ready. Um, so we did want to see how to do um, lazy stitch. I can show you that next really quickly. Set this one on the side. Um, Just put a little tiny bit of lazy stitch right on the edge here. Um, usually when you do a lazy stitch, you will have, like here you have an outside border, you would have probably drawn that on there first and um, you'll want your edges to be the same. And so, I'll just draw just a little tiny one right here. Let's see that. So with the lazy stitch, you're only going to use one needle, that's just your beading needle. And sometimes you'll use these for your um, some big pieces. Um, 
what are all done with lazy stitch. You'll have rows of lazy stitch. It just depends how big a piece you're working on or, or what, but a lot of different pieces will have some lazy stitch and some um, regular tack down stitches. So let's see, I'll put about five beads on. And I'll hold it down here. And then I'll just come up next to it on this other line. So I want to put a little design in that lazy stitch. You can do that in just solid colors or you can um, you can put designs in there. Just like this has a geometric design going. Let's leave that right here. So I'll put like one white bead and four green beads. And I'll come back up over here. So you'll end up having just a little row of stitching on both sides on the bottom. So I'll put three beads on now and two white beads. So I'm, I'm just making sort of a, I guess like a triangle piece or a wedge shape on there. So I'll put three white beads on and two green beads on for this next row. And the thing about any like, geometric pattern or, or if you're working, making a piece, it's pretty good to have all your beads of the same size. Um, if you're not doing something that's um, geometric or, or that you actually have to count your beads, you can use some mixed size beads, sometimes like the middle of an object. Uh, this is a little bit overkill, but if you have something that's not the same size, um, you might bead around it or or have uh, fill in areas with a different size bead. But it's generally better to have all the same size beads so that everything looks even and um, well, you can figure your patterns out there that way. And like I said, the sizes of the beads. The bigger the number, like um, 13s and 12s, are smaller beads than like 10s or 11s or 9s. OK. 
Okay, so. So this is starting to look like two little diamond or you know, two little triangles. So this is just a basic um, way to do lazy stitch. And I, th I think that might just give you the idea. Um, so I will turn this off too. And um, then I'll show you the edging stitch, which will be the last thing that we learn tonight. And then, um, Hopefully you will have some ideas of things that you want to work on yourself and make. Um, so that's a little piece of um, lazy stitch and you can see really don't actually have to have it all stitched down in between. It's gonna lay it pretty flat there. And especially if you were added against something else, but sometimes um, you might use lazy stitch for around the edges of like moccasins, or maybe if you're doing a jacket, you might put some on part of that, or on a brim on a hat. Um, I used it on my uh, Indian outfit, which actually Stella's Indian outfit, which um, on some of the top parts of the um, outfit are made with uh, the lazy stitch. So an example I might be able to show for the, oh, no. okay, but I could also show, but I don't know if I have enough time to do that. Um, I can show how to do this, uh, put a couple rows on on this barrette using just a single single um, thread, which looks like this one's kind of So this um, has a geometric design, and when I would make these barrettes, I usually do um, use a single needle. And so I go in from the top here. And first, you need to sew this leather all on so that the stitches are on the top of your barrette. And you can use a really thin leather, or you might can use like um, ultra suede, which is like a fake leather. It's actually kind of a polyester type material or, or a synthetic material. And so it actually can work as well too. But I come through here. So this has seven beads on it. And I actually put, um, for using the single stitch um, technique or single needle flat stitch technique, I would put say five beads on. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Perhaps my might be too thick. <laughs> but I'll go back through part of the leather on the top and come back where it'll be maybe between the second and third bead here on the top of this sweater. And this one is where you will go back through the beads because that is how you're actually sort of tacking them down. And so I'll go back through like the second, between the second and third and actually put my needle all the way through that. 
can see that. And then I'll put on the next two beads and that'll finish that row. So I catch the weather below or on the edge of the um, barrette. This can be kind of tricky. Sometimes I'll rip the leather and it won't stay on there. And just carefully put your thumb up and put that on there. And if my needle's not too fat, then I'd go back through all of these. But it's not going to. But I go back through all the beads again and start on the same side. Um, Probably just come through the bottom here. Start. I don't know if that will give you a little bit of an idea on how to do that. Um, let's see, there's only like about 10 minutes left. Um, let's see. So, Anita, can I ask a question? This is Carmen. Um, yeah. So a barrette is usually kind of hard, right? Like either plastic or metal or something. And you said yeah. you have leather on it. How yeah. did you how did you put the leather on it? Is it like glued or how? No, I sewed it on. So here oh. is the metal barrette. Uh huh. So you would open it up like that, mm -hmm. and you'd have some leather. Use, but we would have um, them underneath here. The video is Try to gluing, but too hard on beating on. Uh oh. Did we just lose her? We we did just lose her, but I think. She's coming back. She's she's got a save screen. Let's take a peek. See if I can fix this here. Hey, Anita, if you can hear me and you want to turn your camera back on, we lost you for a minute and it and it shut the video feed off. Oh, we're, we're back. We're back in business. Sorry about that. I'm not sure if it's my end or it probably is my end. I, I'm guessing, I don't know. Um, so I was going to show how to do the edging. I don't know if we have enough time to be able to do that or not, but um, let's just run with it. And if folks have to leave, they can head out. But if right. we include it, then it's in the recording for folks to come back to after. Okay. If you okay. have the time. 
Well, yeah, I have some time, so I can okay. do that. Thank you. Sure. So if I had sewed, this is for a hair tie. Um, and that's very simple design, just solid colors. You can do them with a um, little bit more detail and design here, but we're gonna put an edging around here. And um, I'll show you how you do that. So first I would have to take and trim my piece. I don't, you want to be careful not to um, cut the thread. Oops, I see a knot on there. I guess you could trim it while you can see your threads on the back so that you wouldn't um, cut them. But I usually just um, cut it from the top. These hair ties, I use buttons that have a a loop in them or a metal part here which you can attach a hair tie to and I usually put a piece of backing inside here to make it stiff because this is really wobbly and it will stay really wobbly if I uh, don't put something in there. So let me grab that. often use is like an old credit card <laughs> or something hard and plastic like this um, and I have a hole puncher so I will punch a hole oops that was not far enough in there I have a hole which is where my uh button will go fit through there. I'll trim this off. Okay, so now I have something firm underneath here, which is going to um, keep this piece flat. Take a piece of leather and um, You could just draw a circle on there, or you can just hold your piece on here and just um, trim it, which I'll do that. Okay, so now it'll be like a little sandwich. It's going to have my top piece and my middle piece to stiffen it up. And you can do this with other pieces that you're doing too, if you're um, like a hair piece. 
this actually has something kind of stiff in it too to make it stiff. And then you put this backing on so that it covers up your stitches and and protects those stitches. Otherwise, those will they could wear out and then your beads will fall off. But if you put backing on, it protects it and it makes it look nicer. So this is a piece I just um, cut around there. I'll just put a slit in it in the middle. Usually, what I do for the hair tie part, I'll actually put the hair tie in there before I put it um, backing on there. Sometimes I just use a black one, but I'll use one of these other ones here. I'll show you a trick on how to get the hair tie in there. Helpful if you have your if your button is really flat. Um, this one was actually a button that was kind of cup shaped, and so it isn't totally flat. But um, to be able to get this hair tie in there, and you can use another heavier piece of. Um, I think I can probably do it with just the tacking needle that I had. I'm not going to sew it, I'm just going to use this tacking needle to, um, to pull the hair tie through that loop. I can get this other mess I've got going on here. Don't get too much stuff there. So actually, these are going to almost be like a giant bead. I'm going to come through both of those because I'm going to go through this loop here. Thread my, um, is that right? Actually, I guess I need to go back. Sorry, I did that wrong, I guess. I was supposed to go through that part first. Okay, I want to get a thread around this piece so that it's going to loop through my um,
Well, let's just do this. <laughs> that didn't really work too good. Anyway, go, you can just thread the thing through the loop here first and then um, pull it through itself like that, I guess will work easier. And then pull this whole thing up through these holes so that you can um, you'll have that secure to that. Sorry about that, although it wasn't too confusing there. Um, now, you know, take your beading needle. Lines attached over here. So for the edging, um, you'll take your beading needle, go through this bottom piece here, come back and catch the top piece. Like you're gonna sew it on there. And this is where you're gonna put, let's say, um, I guess I don't have to use those colors. I can use whatever I have here. Size. So just for showing how to do this, um, I will use these white beads to be like this part on the white one. And so I will put, I'll put two white beads on and I'll put, say three of these dark green beads on. The first one is a little bit different than the rest of them. And so I'll put two more white beads on. So the white beads are going to be um, like on this piece here. And then I'll have the dark beads here. So you can have just one bead here or you can have a couple. And if you put a lot of these on, like four or five, you can make your edging where it looks a little lacier like that. Or if you want to do just three beads or one bead, you would have just, um, you just use three beads and it will be just a little tiny um, edging. It's the same technique for either way. So um, put two more white beads on. And since I am putting three beads of the dark ones, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out about how far I want the spacing to be. And this you kind of have to figure out as you go. Um, shouldn't be more than the three beads that will be on the outside. But you pull it like that. Then you're going to go back through just the white beads here. Sometimes your thread will want to make a little knot. Okay, so I can see now I have some things sticking up here. So this next ones, I'll just put three green ones and two white ones on.
And I usually always try to come from the bottom and then up through the top. And you're catching this top part that's just outside of your row, over your last row. Oops. You don't have to go through your hard backing stuff. That's just in there to make your piece stiff. Anita, this is Carmen again. That hard backing, like the credit card that you cut out, does that yeah. get, is it going to stay in there or are you yeah. ever pulling it out? No, it's going to stay in there. It's in there to make it be stiff. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that I am making a little edging right here. One of the um, links that I put down in the flyer has um, somebody shows you how to do this edging also. And so um, you can probably click on that and see that as well. Um, you can kind of get the idea of how that, that'll work. And so um, just continue all the way around and then you'll end up with something that looks like this when you do it like, like that style. So um, I guess we're pretty far over time. So I'll just stop there and then um, Thank you for having me. And I don't know if there's any questions or if I need to do anything more, but um, I did leave my email if somebody needs to, feels like they don't have anything uh, or need, they feel like they're stuck, they can ask me and I can reply back to them if I can answer the email. So thanks. Well, great, thank you. Could you show us that little, the rose that's right next to your hand there, like the blue, black and white rose and with blue? Yeah. Is that a rose? No, the big, big beading thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that this is... is a hair piece. Oh, wow. And, um, and this has combination, this has like all the stitches combined. And so oh, wow. use the two stitch, um, flat stitch here and it's got lazy stitch here and then it's got the edging around mm. to be able to cover up all those stitches in there and mm -hmm. then have backing in it and then the stick has the peyote stitch here which after you finish this then you add the the dangly part so mm -hmm. nice you know, and that goes Great. Yeah, I like that. Oh, wow. Um, I don't think there's any other questions, is there? So if you have questions, please ask them now. But um, other than that, um, thank you so much, Anita. This was great. Um, very much enjoyed uh, the uh, presentation and the, uh, the lecture. Um, and Anita was talking about the other links. Um, so whoever picked up a bag, all that information was in there. But if anybody else needs the information, they could just either email Anita or they can email me um, here at the library or call me and I could send it on out. The links are on, on the flyer too, right? They are on the flyer, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying if people um, popped in that didn't get a craft oh, bag, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, uh, they can contact either Anita or me and we could send them on out. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Anita. This was great. All right. Um, and have a good night, everyone. Thank you all so much.
Goodbye. All right.